So next we want to combine our chain rule with our product and quotient rules. So first off, we have all of this inside stuff squared. So we do see it as a composite function, and we follow the same procedure, where we find our inside function. And we find our outside function. And then we find the derivatives of both of them. Okay, so for u prime, uh, we're going to have to use the quotient rule here. Okay, so we want to find the derivative of our high, and that's just going to equal 3. And we want to find the derivative of our low, and that equals 2x. So remember, low d high minus high d low over low squared. Okay, so again, we need to be working on memorizing this here. So our low function, x squared plus 3 times d high, derivative of our high is 3 minus the high function, 3x minus 1, times the derivative of our low function, which is 2x, all over our low function squared. And then if we want to find f prime, that's just going to be 2u. Okay, so we did it. We found our u prime and our f prime. So let's go ahead and take this derivative. So y prime is going to equal, well, remember we're going to take uh, f prime of u times u prime. So it equals 2u, and we can go ahead and write u in here. So we have 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3 times u prime. So all of this stuff right here. And we can go ahead and simplify just a little bit as we go. So this would be uh, 3x squared plus 9 minus... Let's go ahead and distribute here as well. So 6x squared and then minus, well, let's go ahead and put our brackets here and <laughs> then we won't get messed up with that minus there. So we got the 6x squared and then minus 2x and then it's just going to be over x squared plus 3 squared. And now let's see if we can simplify any more here. Okay, so in the numerator, we're going to have uh, these kind of factors here. We're going to have 2 times 3x minus 1. And then in this case, we get minus 6x plus 2x. So if we have 3x squared minus 6x squared, that's negative 3x squared. And then we still have plus 2x and plus 9. And this is all going to be over. Well, here's x squared plus 3 times x squared plus 3 squared. So now we actually have three of those factors. So we have x squared plus 3 cubed. And that would be the final answer. So these can get a little bit lengthy, uh, a lot of legwork because we have to substitute in here our quotient rule because our u function had a quotient of functions. All right, let's move on. 
In our next example, we're going to see here that we have the product rule because we have x squared times the square root of a function, and we have the chain rule because we have the square root of a function. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this first. Okay, and we're going to remember our product rule. Remember, it is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So let's go ahead and just find these derivatives. Okay, so our first function is x squared. And the derivative of this equals 2x. And our second function is right here, 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. So we want to find its derivative. And we'll use our general power rule. So it's going to be 1 half, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which was 2x. Actually, negative 2x this was a minus. Okay, and we can simplify this a little bit here. So this becomes, let's see, 1 half times negative 2, that's gone. So this is really just negative x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Okay, so right here is actually where we ended up using our chain rule. Happened to be first this time. So let's go ahead and find the product rule now. So it's our first function, x squared, times the derivative of the second function, which is right here. Okay, and then plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which was just 2x. Okay, now we need to simplify this. So here I can multiply x squared times negative x, and I'm going to get negative x cubed times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, and then plus 2x times 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. Now at this point, I'm going to show you a technique uh, that we use to factor out when we have similar factors down here, right? You see the 1 minus x squared right here, and you see the 1 minus x squared here. So whenever we have that, we like to factor this out. And the way we do it, since this is to the negative 1 half, and this is to the 1 half, we go ahead and take out uh, the more difficult one. So we're actually going to factor out um, a 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Okay. Now along with this we're also going to factor out an x because I see an x in both of these terms. So I'm just going to put that in, out in front as well. Okay, so that's what we're factoring out. And what are we left with? Well, in this term, we're still going to have a negative x squared. And notice this factor is exactly the same. So that's just 1, 
and we don't need to write it. So we'll just leave negative x squared and then plus, well we factored out the x so we have 2 and here we factored out a negative 1 half from the 1 half. So the way we do that is we subtract the exponent of whatever we factored out. So we're actually subtracting a negative 1 half here from the 1 half. In essence, what effect does this have? 1 half minus negative 1 half, well that actually goes to 1. So let's rewrite this as 1 minus x squared and that's really just to the first power now. We still have the 2 and the negative x squared and it's still being multiplied by this here. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and distribute our 2 now. We can do that because this is to the first power. So this becomes 2 minus 2x squared and we still have the negative x squared here and our factor out in front and now you can see we can combine our x squareds and we're gonna flip our negative exponent underneath so let's go ahead and do that so we have the x and this becomes 2 minus 3x squared. So we have the 2 here, and then minus x squared minus 2x squared is negative 3x squared. And then we're going to flip this underneath and actually apply it as a square root. And this, my friends, is our final answer. So in this one, the big trick is when you have two factors that are like a positive half and a negative half, you want to factor out the negative half, which in a sense means minus the negative half, which adds up to 1. And then it becomes even easier to simplify. All right, and we're going to try one last example here together. All right, in our next example, we have a function x divided by a radical. And so in this case, we are going to use our quotient rule. Before we do, let's rewrite our radical as fractional exponents. So this is x over x squared plus 4 to the 1 third. And now you can see we're going to use the quotient rule here. So we need to find our d high, which equals a 1. That's an easy one and we want to find our d low. This one here, we're going to have to use the chain rule. We see our inside functions, x squared plus 4, and our power is 1 third. So let's use our general power rule. So we have 1 third times the x squared plus 4, and then we're going to subtract 1 from this. So 1 third minus 3 thirds is negative 2 thirds. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside here. So that's going to be times 2x. Okay, so now we have d high and d low. Let's apply our quotient rule.
Okay, <laughs> so hopefully you were able to follow all of that. Looks very long, but remember just to keep it in chunks, following your rule. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. So not much I can do with that first term except we don't need the times one. Okay, over on this side here, let's go ahead and uh, multiply the 2x times the 1 -third times the x. And so that's going to give me minus 2x squared over 3. And then we're going to multiply here times x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds. And this is going to be divided by, well, when you square a power here, you just multiply, so it's going to be 2 times a third. So that's really going to be to the 2 thirds here. So we get x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds. Now, here is the big deal. When you are confronted with this, hopefully again, you can see the x squared plus 4, and hopefully you can see that these are both two fractional powers. And we don't really like that, it's not very helpful. And so what we want to try to do is get one of these to equal 1. And what we usually would like to do is get rid of that negative fractional exponent. So we are going to try to factor this out here. And so we're going to take out an x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds. Okay, so we factored it right out of there and we took that exact thing out. So what does that leave us with? Well, we still have this term here, which is an x squared plus 4 and it was one-third, and we factored out, so we're going to subtract, a negative two-thirds. And that's going to be the toughest part right there. Now over here, we took the whole factor out, so we're just left with this part. So minus 2x squared over 3. And of course, this is all over low squared still. Okay, at this point now, we just need to simplify this. Okay, so we can see here we have an x squared plus 4 and an x squared plus 4, and this negative exponent means we're going to flip that underneath. So let's take a look at what that does. So we'll flip this one under, and we get x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds times x squared plus 4 to the two-thirds. Okay, and then moving back up, one-third minus negative two-thirds really becomes plus plus. So one-third plus two-thirds is one. So we're left with an x squared plus four to the first power. And then we have a minus 2x squared over 3. Okay. And since it's to the first power, I guess we don't even really need these parentheses here. And now let's add our x squareds together. So we have 1x squared, or we can think of this as 3 thirds x squared minus 2 thirds x squared leaves us with 1 third x squared. We still have plus 4. And let's deal with this here. If we have this times this, so like bases, we add our exponents. So 2 thirds plus 2 thirds is going to give us 4 thirds. So we have x squared plus 4 
to the 4 thirds. And then we don't necessarily like our fraction up there. So we're actually going to factor this 1 third out of all of this. So we're going to take 1 third times x squared. And then 1 third times what gives us 4? 1 third times what equals 4? Well, we'd have to multiply everything by 3. So x would have to equal 12. So 1 third times 12 gives us our 4. Okay, and now that 1 third, we can just move the 3 into our denominator. So we have that there. And then in the numerator, we still have x squared plus 12. And filling out our denominator there, we have 3 times x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. All right, now a lot of this simplifying stuff can get pretty tedious and difficult, especially if you're checking your answers in the back of the book or in Wolfram Alpha or something. Um, but it's just good to know how, how they came up with an answer that looks like this because anywhere along the line, you know, if you had left it like this, it's not technically wrong. Um, but sometimes you're going to see people simplify things in different ways. Some examples now for you to give it a try on your own. So take a look at those and refer back to your notes, and we can discuss those when we get to class. All right, so that's been using the chain rule. Uh, the next lesson is going to look at the chain rule and trig functions. So I'm sure you're very excited for that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you in class.